Hi and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to take a quick look at monitoring uh, MQTT brokers. Now there are actually three ways that, that I know of, of of doing this and one is using the the ping command. Uh, this is a very general one, it actually doesn't monitor the, the broker itself but it monitors the machine that the broker is on and remember a machine or a computer can be running multiple instances of a broker so this ping command will actually monitor the machine rather than the broker. Uh, the other is using the sys topic. Um, there is an article now, I'll put a link in the video description below that I read about not using the sys topic uh, for monitoring the broker. Uh, not all brokers actually publish on the sys topic, most do but not all do and if the broker isn't actually using the sys topic or isn't published on the sys topic then obviously you can't monitor the the broker using that uh, that method and the final one is actually by sending messages through it now this is the method I prefer you basically send the message through it and you actually monitor the, the message coming back and using this method you can actually monitor multiple brokers and you can actually mo monitor multiple instances of a broker so if you've got a machine running several instances of a broker which you will have because a lot of brokers will run uh, plain MQTT, they will run uh, MQTT over web sockets, they will run uh, secure MQTT and secure MQTT over web sockets so it, a, a single broker can be running at least four instances Okay, in this video we're going to concentrate on using the ping method and this is the results of the, the flow. Um, we've got two tabs here, reload brokers which reloads the brokers and the brokers are actually stored in a, a text file and this one will reset the results, it will basically clear the dis display here. This is what the brokers look like, this is the text file and you can see it's basically looking like a host table with the uh, name and the IP address of the actual broker itself and of course you can add and delete from this and if you change this then you just need to reload the brokers to update the broker list. Okay let's go and look at the the flow at the bottom of the flow we got some general housekeeping now I have this on most of my demo flows and basically it helps when you're actually debugging things that so you want to reset things especially uh, flow variables um, but here you can see this is the reload button that reloads the brokers reads it from the text file we've also got an inject node uh, that does it as well and we've got uh, one here that resets the email address and resets the results Okay, this is the main bit of the of the flow, and we're using the configurable ping node. And basically, when you, you uh, pass it an IP address or host name, and it will ping that, and it will give you a result. And this is the now this is a sample out output on the right hand side. You can see here the payload here is false on this broker address uh, uh, ending in 21, and the other sorry, this is 21. This is 41. And if I look back at the table, you can see that broker 21 and 41 are shown as red, they're offline. And so the payload is false coming out of here. Uh, for one that's working, we have actually a value. This is the time, this is the, this is the round trip delay. Okay, um, we have an inject note which injects every five seconds. It feeds it into this get broker, which basically loops through the broker list and I'm using the send uh, node.send so I'm going to loop through the broker list to send the message out uh, for each broker and then the the configurable ping node will actually ping the broker and pass on the result now in the results node I process the output of the ping node and I store the results in a results table and you can see the results table here So I don't know uh, about the brokers, so what I do is I just load them into the um, into an object. So the results broker, another broker, whatever the broker is, 192.168, whatever. Now if it's undefined, in other words, if I haven't seen this, def this broker before, then I just set up the uh, variables within that uh, object. 
and I don't know what this is and I can't remember because it's a while since I actually did this flow there's a bug fix here and I don't know what the bug fix is all about um, but I'm just going to leave it there and we see here if we go further down here that we set our um, traffic lights to b to green or red depending on the state of the the broker so if it's down we set them to red if it's otherwise we set it to green and this is what the results node looks like you can see the results object here we have an IP address which is a broker and then we have a time up we have an email flag you know have we emailed it to state the broker name how long it's been up and the display uptime the display uptime is what's actually shown on the on the screen in addition we have a notify node um, this basically is going to notify by email so I'm setting up the uh, email here and it sends it off into this email node now this email node is actually failing and it's failing uh, for the reason that it's actually using Google and Google changed their uh, default security several weeks ago and stopped this node working now there is a workaround and I've got an article on the site and it links to that workaround uh, the workaround is supposed to work but I haven't tried it I decided after that that I'd switch to be using my own uh, email um, you need a POP3 or an IMAP4 email um, account uh, with uh, SMTP and just to finish off this is the SysMonitor um, flow uh, which I'll be covering in another video and this is the and this is the send and receive flow you can see here it's measuring the actual delay uh, on the send and receive okay that's the end of the video until next time uh, goodbye